Um, thanks very much for the introduction. And um, we now have an interesting um, presentation with me um, going ad lib because uh, the wonderful uh, ability to share uh, my screen has worked and hopefully there's a short video which we'll also be able to, to see. Um, but uh, I can't see my notes. So um, it's one of those, so please excuse me if I miss things out, um, but you won't know that I suppose. Um, so um, let's, let's get going. I, do, I have managed to get my uh, slides on a um, on my phone, so I know what's coming up next. So that's a that's a definite advantage. So um, yeah, who am I? Well, um, you may have seen this image before, um, but please don't worry that you're you're going to get a, a 500 slide presentation um, from me from the climate reality uh, slide deck. However, I just wanted to say um, that, um, yeah, my degree was in geography and I became an accountant and um, I ended up advising small businesses and the last 30 years have been spent um, doing just that um, until I became involved um, actually about 30 years ago in sustainability. And um, as Mark mentioned, I did a, 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 a master's in yeah, yeah, but this video, Kim, it's not something to do no, with. I know, but it might. No, it's not uh, nothing to do with it. I've, I've, I've undone it a couple okay. of times, Kim. Okay. So, um, the uh, what then happened was that um, my wife and I were trained at the suggestion of Carrie Court um, of Sussex Green Living um, to go to Atlanta and be trained by Al Gore. And this is our picture here. As uh, those of you who weren't able to go this year, um, uh, this is us in Atlanta. So this is really about um, the sustainable development goals and about climate action and how the circular economy fits into this. Um, and one of the uh, challenges that I faced in Atlanta was, as Mark said, um, heard lots doom and gloom but not much in terms of solutions apart from renewable energy. And um, one thing that did really strike me um, in, in the work that we were doing there is about just where greenhouse gases were coming from. And this is just a, um, a simple example of uh, how um, our food production and the food systems contribute um, 20 to 30% of the greenhouse gases. Um, and, and what I was then very fortunate to do in, uh, in Atlanta was to go to a presentation by Catherine Wilkinson of Project Drawdown. And um, I was bowled over, solutions galore. And here, I'm not sure um, if you can see my screen, um, but hopefully yes. So this is the book that came with Project Drawdown. Um, and when it came to food and food systems, um, Regenerative agriculture was one of the solutions that was suggested. Um, and actually that is my link with the circular economy because the circular economy is one of those um, quite umbrella type um, initiatives or terms that, um, and regenerative agriculture forms part of that. Now I'm just going to show you a short video Hopefully this will work and this will tell you something about what the circular economy is about in cartoon form. Um, Mark, please tell me if, uh, if, if the sound doesn't come through and I'll see what I can do about that. So this lasts uh, about two or three minutes um, and um, at the end of it we will, um, and it, this is um, produced by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, one of the leading lights in um, the circular economy. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species' waste is another's food, energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. We take we make and we dispose. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. 
Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy? Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of rethink, a way to cycle valuable metals, polymers and alloys, so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow? It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. But the circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together. It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. Okay, so that was um, a short cartoon produced by the Anna MacArthur Foundation. Anna MacArthur was that around the world yachtswoman who, uh, who gave up and decided to spend um, the next 10 years uh, developing ideas on the circular economy. Um, so what is the circular economy? Well, you've just had one view. Um, there is another um, view that says where we are currently is a linear economy, which is a take make waste type of economy. Um, we should be moving towards a more recycling economy. And there is a fair amount of work, work being done on that. Recycling um, is quite common practice in most, um, most districts. A circular economy is where we design out waste completely, and this is not something um, that um, is very well practiced. And it is beyond, it is not just um, extreme recycling, it's not just about waste. So um, we are moving from this take, make, waste kind of linear economy to something where we're having um, make, use, reuse, remake, recycle a lot more circularity in the way we operate, where we run our economy. But let me give you an example um, of the problem. Now, a few years ago, I did a stock take of my electronic devices, and this is what I had. Now, I'd like to think that this isn't the case now, uh, certainly not in my case, but I'd like to think that people do not hang on to their um, mobile phones or electronic devices because there is gold in there. We also, I have also hung on to chargers and earphones, um, other types of readers. Um, and um, this is where I ended up with my stock take. Now, part of the problem 
Um, is this. We have been used to getting free upgrades on a very regular basis. And so, um, like myself, many people have just hung on to those things um, and then not done anything with them. And they sit in drawers for a long time. And yet the, um, the value within a, a second hand phone is, is, is very significant. And the idea in a circular economy is to keep this phone in use for as long as possible. And what are the solutions to this? Um, well, it revolves around design to see how we can make um, our mobile phones more modular. I'll come back to that in a minute, that we can repair them, upgrade them. Um, and most people's phones, you can't even change the battery in the phone. Um, to get take back schemes, they're now more popular. There's one in Brighton. Um, and how we can uh, recycle components once it's been used. Certainly when I lived in Africa, uh, they were never, um, uh, there were never, never um, mobile phones thrown away. They were always being repaired. Um, alternatives are now occurring as you can actually have a product as a service. So you can buy for the use of a phone rather than owning the phone itself. And um, whilst I can't see my screen, the phone that I have, um, my mobile phone is a fair phone. And this is a modular approach. I can take the back off my phone. I can change the battery. I can change the parts um, within it. Um, and there are ways, um, uh, the, the website called iFixit, that um, helps you um, take the parts, uh, you get replace replacement for those parts. The alternative um, is something Apple's devised um, called Daisy, where Daisy is a robot that takes apart mobile phones and reuses the components. So, um, defining a circular economy, um, RAP, um, the Waste Recycling, um, the Waste Resources Board, um, has a definition that um, a circular economy um, keeps resources in use for as long as possible. It extracts the maximum value for, from them whilst in use, and then recovers and regenerates products and materials at the end of each of their surface life. And basically, it's a lot like nature. There is no waste in nature. Um, it started off as a, an economic model, actually, but the environmental elements of it and now the social elements are coming into play, uh, the benefits that come from a circular economy. Um, now, the origins of the circular economy, it has been around for many years. Um, it has been started um, through a combination of these uh, different uh, elements. So cradle to cradle, uh, performance economy, the blue economy, biomimicry and industrial ecology. Um, thinking in systems, uh, this, the, the circular economy is very much a, a systemic issue. There are many things, including taxation implications. Um, and this is not something that is going to happen. It isn't happening overnight. Um, but more and more people are now becoming um, involved in the circular economy, including countries like Chile, who have developed a circular economy roadmap as part of their non uh, national determined contributions, which they are being updated this year. So we're seeing more and more a link being made between climate, the SDGs and the circular economy. Now, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has produced this with, um, with McKinsey's, this, this diagram. And what it says is that um, there are two halves, as the, um, the, the video suggested, a technical side and a biological side. Um, and these, this value chain can then, at the end of um, the life of technical products, can be uh, maintained, reused, refurbished, and then ultimately recycled. And the biological side, I referred to regenerative agriculture before, about how the, uh, the biological elements can also be fed back into the system. Um, I have an example a little bit later of a closed loop as opposed to an open loop um, circularity. So um, in the interest of um, recycling, um, I borrowed this slide from the Recycling Council of Ontario. Um, it is a, a classic um, division of five business models of circularity. So we have um, the, the, the supply of, um, of materials into the system, how we recover them, 
extending the product life through repair and um, upgrading, sharing platforms, and using um, rather than owning products, we we buy them as we as we need to use them. And examples of this in a large company. Um, so a book called uh, Waste to Wealth was written by Peter Lacey, um, and he uses these five different categories with these examples here. Um, so the, um, a very good example of a circular economy has been practiced by Caterpillar for a long time. It's, it's their most profitable division of taking um, used equipment and remanufacturing it and giving it a guarantee in the, to the same extent as, as something which is new. Um, the sharing platforms I'm sure you're all used to, um, Deliveroo, Uber, Airbnb, there are questions within um, the circular economy as to whether some of these, these models are actually uh, ethical and sustainable given issues around with Airbnb and non-payment of taxes and staffing um, care for staff um, with Uber. Um, but Philips has been uh, running their product as a service. People, they don't sell light bulbs to large corporates, they sell them light. Um, and the Dutch airport um, buys its light from Philips. And when something goes wrong, Philips comes and repairs it and replaces. So these um, large businesses have incorporated, just like Renault in the way they remanufacture some of their cars, they're using um, a circular economy as principles for, um, for their business models very successfully. Um, now the evidence, excuse me, for um, the link between the circular, and, and circular economy and climate change, more and more we were seeing, seeing in the last couple of years research projects which have been done which are, are quantifying the benefits of the circular economy to decarbonisation and climate. Um, the, um, the most recent is by um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation again in conjunction with material economics where um, they say that um, to date efforts to tackle the climate crisis have focused mostly on the transition to renewable energy, complemented by energy efficiency. And though these approaches to um, renewable energy uh, are consistent with what the circular economy is trying to do, they only address 55% of emissions. And the remaining 45% comes from producing the cars, clothes, food, and other products that we use every day. And these cannot be overlooked. The circular economy can contribute to completing this picture of emissions reduction by transforming the way we make and use products. So um, in agriculture, for example, by adopting circular principles through regeneration, we can sequester carbon in the soil. Um, and this paper by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation suggests that um, by circulating products and materials instead of producing new ones, we can cut energy demand, but we can also um, look at five key areas, cement, aluminium, steel, plastics, and food, which can eliminate almost half of these remaining emissions from the production of goods, which would be 9.3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent in 2050, which is equivalent to cutting current emissions from all transport to zero. So these, um, um, and uh, Mark will distribute uh, these slides afterwards and you can follow up with these reports. Uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation report here, uh, it, it makes it very clear um, the quantities of carbon um, that can be saved um, as a result of using circular approaches. Um, the European Commission um, picked this up in 2015 um, by producing their um, circular economy action plan. Uh, which was initially focused on recycling rates, but now um, they're realizing that the by scaling up with the circular economy, it is possible to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. Um, so the plan um, is now in place and uh, action is being taken. So what's happening here in the UK? Well, the latest report of the UK Climate Change Committee, which came out a month or so ago, there were uh, five key priorities and the fifth one was moving towards a circular economy. Um, that said, 
Um, the Prime Minister yesterday announced the Green Plan. I had the details in front of me on my notes, but I don't have them to hand. Um, but I'm sure you've um, been reading up about it. Um, whilst it's a very good start, uh, it, it, there, there needs to be a lot more detail behind it. And despite this recommendation, there is very little mention in what I've read so far of any um, uh, move towards a circular economy. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of money spent on um, installing heat pumps, um, which is going to be an interesting exercise over the next, next 20, uh, 10, 10 to 20 years. So um, we've made a start um, by getting the, uh, the circular economy as an initiative on the radar. But what is it? What, what can we do? Um, what can business do? Um, we can uh, use lots of different resources. And um, one that I have come across, which has been very helpful in developing countries, is the, is the brewing process, where um, spent grains out of the brewing process in South Africa has been used to make a, um, a nutritional drink for people living in, um, in poorer areas. So um, the, 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 the waste that comes out of one system can go back into um, another system. An example of that I came across was um, with Starbucks, where um, uh, the shop sends back um, the, um, the grounds from the coffee beans they use. It goes to recycling facility where they make it into um, cattle feed, which then goes to the cattle to make milk. And then that goes back to Starbucks in the form of milk. Um, and vegetables. So that would be the form of a closed loop, the, um, a company using its own waste to create new input materials. Um, Recognising time is short. Um, you may not have come across a, a recycling mile in Sweden uh, where the whole of the, the building is devoted to, to recycling. So what, what do we see here in Sussex? Um, there are many initiatives that have circular dimensions. I think it's actually very difficult to be a completely circular business, um, but there are elements of it in many businesses. So Ruby Moon makes uh, swim and gym wear from recycled fishing nets. So that's using waste as a resource. Super Looper, relatively new, um, is a library for baby clothes. And when your baby has grown out of them, you return them and get another set of baby clothes. Um, and you can donate clothes that you don't need from other sources that then get reused by other parents. Um, sadly, uh, this little truck down here, Charlotte's Cupboard, was a great mobile plastic free um, shop. Um, and this is part of the challenge with the circular economy for small businesses to actually maintain a profitable business as well as being circular um, can be an extreme challenge. Um, so how do you get involved in the circular economy? Well, there are many ways. One is to think about reading about it. Um, Ken Webster used to work for the Amakar Foundation. He's a very big brain and um, his books are very challenging. I work with this lady, Catherine Wheatman, and um, to provide um, coaching service on the circular economy. She's just written the second edition of her book. Um, very, very full of, full of insights and case studies. Um, and I mentioned right at the end about donor economics, Kate Rayworth and the work that she's doing on the social side of the circular economy. You could invent a material. These bricks were developed by some students in South Africa. They combined urine, sand and an enzyme, um, which made um, bricks for the uh, construction industry at room temperature. Um, we have um, repair cafes. Um, that's, uh, we have about three here now, I think, in, in Sussex, in near, near us, where you can take your um, um, kettles, um, toasters, um, and other things that need to repair, and there will be experts there who can help. Um, the, the, by giving um, Too Good To Go and Oleo a ways of um, restaurants giving, um, selling off um, food, which um, they need to sell, they can sell it cheaper, rates and people can come and collect. Um, and I have a picture here of our uh, MP, Mims Davis, who um, is Minister uh, the, at DWP, Department of Work and Pensions. 
And as Mark said at the outset, one of the things that we're doing as climate reality leaders is um, to work very closely with our policymakers. So we're working with the MP, our district council, our parish council, and the nearby town council. Um, and Haywards Heath Town Council are actually using the, um, uh, the project drawdown uh, 100 solutions as the basis for them determining their sustainability and climate strategy. And one thing we've learned dealing with policymakers is it's best to engage with them where things matter to them. And you can actually do this without mentioning climate too often. So we had a conversation on Zoom with MIMS uh, a month ago, and we talked to her about agriculture, about regenerative agriculture. And she has a farming background. And we're going to take her to visit a nearby farm which is using sustainable practices. Um, so just coming towards an end, I just wanted to mention the work that I do in Africa with the African Circular Economy Network. Um, here are some examples of circular economy um, initiatives that are going on. A lot of people know about circular economy and what's happening in Europe, but in Africa, the circular economy is being practiced for, for generations, really through necessity. They, um, they don't waste much at all. Um, and these initiatives that we are now creating a circular economy case study platform to, to show the world what's actually going on in Africa. So in Nigeria, um, they uh, provide tractor services using mobile phone and mobile money. Um, you don't own tractors, um, you, you just hire one for the time that you need and it's available um, through a sharing platform. Um, in, in South Africa, um, their agri-protein, which actually was invented by a British chap, um, they use uh, black soldier fly um, larvae to produce protein for animal feed. Um, so there's a whole variety of different types of... Um, um, and the other interesting one actually in South Africa was um, a chap I've met recently who um, collects organic waste from people's houses and turns them through um, vermi culture uh, through, through worms into soil conditioner and fertilizer to, to, to give back to the householders. Um, so these are the kind of initiatives um, that are going on because waste is a problem. Um, the remanufacturing hubs in Ghana have been going around for decades. Um, and a more recent one in Rwanda, um, where I was um, a couple of years ago, uh, recycling electronic and electric devices. And solar uh, initiatives are very common within uh, Africa. Um, and this is an example of uh, in Kenya, where they're collecting organic waste from restaurants and hotels and converting it into uh, fertilizer. So nothing is wasted um, to a large extent in Africa. Um, and finally, I just wanted to mention about um, donut economics. So Kate Rayworth um, has taken um, the idea that, um, that we have an environmental ceiling. We, we have a limited um, planet. We have got a limit on, on the extent that we can actually push these environmental boundaries. But at the same time, we need to maintain a, a, a social foundation so that people can live in um, at a minimum level. So she refers to the donut, which is this bit in the middle. This is the space that we should be operating within our environmental limitations, um, but providing a just and fair life for people. And, um, and she has mapped uh, the SDGs against her donut and how these things can um, interact. And, and I think the circular economy forms very much part of um, this uh, thinking about how we can make the most of our resources um, and design out waste and start to follow nature in some of the principles that uh, are being adopted. Um, so that's the end of that. Um, I can be contacted on, on these uh, in these ways and part of my work as well as working with um, circular economy entrepreneurs in Africa, um, providing um, circular economy coaching um, with Catherine at, at Rethink. Um, so thank you uh, for listening. I'm sorry that uh, it's not as complete a presentation as it should be due for technical reasons, but I hope you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Mark. Back to you. Thank you, uh, Peter. That was um, absolutely brilliant. Um, just one second.